How's it going there guys? This video is going to be all about the new ASI 2600MC Air from ZPO. It is their kind of all-in-one camera that comprises of a main sensor, a guide sensor and an ASI Air-based imaging computer all in one. It's, I think it's a really neat product, quite a compelling product to be honest with you, uh, but I can absolutely see it's not going to be for everybody. Uh, I've had this thing here for about six weeks for review at this point it was sent over directly by zwo but in no way shape or form is this a paid or sponsored review or i'm not getting anything from it in fact i'm down money at this point because it is quite a high ticket price item and being imported cost me a fair bit of money so uh, there it is if you like this kind of content and want to see more of it please do consider leaving a like on the video for me so what i've done over the course of that six week is I've tried to take down as many notes as I possibly could, meticulously handwritten notes throughout. Uh, good points, bad points, and points that are just here or there, you know what I mean? And I'm going to try and break it down as much as I possibly can into main talking points throughout this. So with that said, let's dive into the main body uh, of this review. So first off, uh, the thing that I really want to touch upon because it's the main thing for me, and I think the main selling point for me too, is the fact that this is truly an all-in-one. Uh, the only thing that you really need to do is just connect it to your telescope, connect it to your mount, be that wired or via Bluetooth, and then everything is taken care of on board, basically. So right the way from just image capture tasks, that can be standard DSO imaging, it can plan mosaics for you, it can do planetary, lunar, solar with appropriate filtration, it can even stack all those files too. It's If you're familiar with the ASI Air, then it is just kind of more of that, so you can probably skip this little segment, but if you're not and you're kind of on the fence about it or you haven't tried an ASI Air in a while because it changes a lot over time for the better, I would say, then uh, stick around and I'll try my best to explain what it's all about to you. So this is all from my perspective of coming from someone who does this as a living, literally I'm, you know, I'm taking astro data and turning it into videos to share with you guys or tutorial data and things like that. So I just want something really that just works with a minimum of fuss. I don't want to be wasting time needlessly on setups. Uh, and that's where this has came in really, really strong for me over the past, like I say, six weeks or so. It's just coincided with me being more busy than I've ever really been in my life before. And so at that time, I've naturally lent more towards using this kind of crab and go rig because it has just been so easy to use and accessible. Um, I have no problem, by the way, I just want to make this clear, using PC-based stuff, you know, Nina, SharpCap, all that kind of thing. No problem at all. Uh, and I can absolutely see the appeal and the reasoning behind why someone might want to go with that. But for me, the ASA Air kind of all-in-one system has just been fantastic. For my purposes it's allowed me to gather data when otherwise pretty much i'd be too tired or couldn't you know what i mean i don't want to risk getting off the observatory roof when winds are high and things like that but a small portable rig it's been uh, awesome so yeah my, my first point is super easy to set up and it just works i i have at no point in all of my usage of this felt held back by the things that it can do uh, and i want to make that completely clear so that's that's me um so the next part that i want to touch upon is how guiding is implemented on this camera so it feels a little bit like off axis guiding but it's more i suppose on axis guiding as your guide sensor is right next to your main sensor so that's both kind of a good and a bad thing it means like it's got almost no wind profile like a guide scope or even an off axis guider has there's nothing that can get knocked or tapped uh, or cables to get caught, that kind of thing. But, um, <laughs> as a downside, you are guiding through whichever filters you're currently using at the time. Now, if you're imaging in broadband, it's, well, it's a non-issue completely. If you are imaging through something like a very tight dual narrowband filter, which is commonly used these days, I've tested it right down to a three and a half nanometer dual band filter, um, then do bear in mind that you will need to increase probably both your gain and exposure on the guide sensor in order to get plenty of usable stars but this is one of the things that before the camera arrived i thought it was going to be uh, a bigger problem than really it actually was uh, and i'm happy to say that the, thanks to the sensitivity of that guide sensor it's never held me back once i've always been able to find 
a selection of guide stars actually in many different pointing angles and through any filter that I've used. So uh, yeah, as I say, it might sound like a negative and it isn't a perfect thing, you know what I mean? You are having to look through filters, that's never going to be truly ideal, but it works and it works well, uh, I have to say. So no actual complaints there, just something to make you aware of. Now there is a side point kind of coming off that which I want to touch upon right now and that is that I would say due to the fact that this thing isn't independently focusable like you can do with an off-axis guider. Um, you probably want quite a well-corrected telescope, at least over APS-C sized sensors, uh, as about, that's roughly where the guide sensor is placed, if you will, at the edge of an APS-C sized sensor uh, image circle. If you have something that's uncorrected at that kind of image circle size, or very vignetted, shall we say, so the guide sensor will be getting a lot less light, it's probably not for you, to be honest with you. But um, thankfully, it's not that high of a bar anymore. Isn't connect, uh, you know, corrected over an APS-C sized uh, sensor or better for most telescopes these days. I've done all of my testing with it on the ZWO FF80 flat field APO, and you know, with it being a flat field APO, it has been incredible for this. I've never had any trouble whatsoever. If the main sensor's in focus, then so too is the guide sensor. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to like make you aware of that point as i know that some telescopes out there there isn't many but some aren't well corrected over APS-C, so it's probably not all those uh, at least not if you want to use it with guiding so that's uh my my second main point now for the third thing i want to touch upon is the fact that it is so neat and streamlined being all in one uh that it makes everything else that i've ever used look like a bit of a cluttered mess if I'm being honest with you, there's almost nothing to get caught by wind. There's nothing to get, you know, caught while I'm carrying it out, transporting it, etc. So maybe if you're someone who's mobile with your setup, then I think this would be just about unbeatable. Uh, in that case, uh, it's, you know, it's far neater and lighter too. So your mount's going to have to do less work. You're going to have to do less work getting it set up uh, and ready to go. And I really appreciated that as well, to be honest. Um, so that's that's my next point is it's so unbelievably sleek and neat and, and that's one of the things I truly love about it. It feels minimalist in its design but it offers you everything you're going to need, or at least me and my needs uh, in terms of what it can actually accomplish. Um, now another major point I think, uh, if you're like me, you've got more telescopes than is reasonable to own sometimes you know you are going to want to swap rigs over and that would usually uh be a bit of a pain if i'm being honest with you i don't enjoy doing it particularly because it means inevitably swapping over guide setups uh imaging computers and things like that so with this it's not like that all you have to do is take your camera off because that contains everything and then put it on your next telescope and as long as you're roughly balanced you are good to go the the only thing that you're going to need to do is get your you know your sensor back in focus and recalibrate guiding because obviously the rotation of your guide sensor is determined as well by the rotation of the main camera body so that's just something to bear in mind so the asia software is something else i want to touch upon real quickly just again um it's pretty seamless at this point, I would say I, I've had no crashes or anything like that. The closest thing to an issue that I've had uh, was down to the hardware that I was using to power the the camera. Now, this is this is a point that I discovered pretty much by accident. If you let your voltage drop below twelve, you are going to start to have issues with uh, frame downloads, unfortunately. So, if you're someone who uses a portable rig with something like a lead acid battery or something like that that drops off quite you know, notably in cold temperatures over the course of a night or over its charge, it drops off in voltage a lot. So unregulated and can drop below 12, the camera's not for you uh, unless you're willing to upgrade your power supply. So for me, I just swapped out my power supply because it was going bad. All problems solved is absolutely fine. Now I'm happy to say, and it's never given a single issue since that point. So as long as you've got 12 volts or above, ideally above, um, you're going to have no problems with it but again it's just one of those things that i noted and i thought was more than worth talking about um obviously the hardware on this thing is well known really at this point the uh the 220 guide sensor and the imx 571 main sensor 
you know, it's the best kind of stuff out there at this point. Uh, no doubt in a few years' time, something better will come along. Uh, and at that point, no doubt, <laughs> said we all release a new updated version of this, but that's fine. I view it as that type of product where um, I would put it in the same sort of category as purchasing yourself a new like a DSLR body or something like that to go with your lenses. Um, it's an all-in-one thing that you should... You know, you should compare all aspects of this and make sure you are going to be happy with it because it's a big purchase. Um, and you're probably going to be using it for at least a few years. Do you know what I mean? And at that point, maybe look at upgrading if that's what you want to do. For me, I think though, the, the next five years or so, you're going to be absolutely set with this thing. It does everything you could want and it does it well. Uh, and the, the tech is right up there as it stands. So there's no, uh, there's no reason to, you know, wait around and think, mm, is this any good? We, we know it is. Do you know what I mean? The, the hardware that's used in there. Now, obviously you are locked in fully to ZWO with this thing. So by its very nature, it is ASI Air only. You cannot use it on a PC. Um, for me, I knew that, you know, before getting started with this. So it's not a problem. But I just want to make everybody who's watching this, who's not already aware uh, of that fact that that is how it is. You've got to use this with the inbuilt ASI Air. Um, so, you know, <laughs> they have that and another downside potentially, but also it does come with its own upsides is that it is inside the ecosystem and it is all locked down in terms of hardware. So you, you can't change out your guide sensor. You can't change out anything. You really, you can't change your ASI air within it or anything like that. It's all in one. So if you bought everything separately, you know, you bought a 2600, you bought a 220 based guider and off axis guider, your main camera, you know, all the stuff. Um, and fitted it together then yes you would have more interchangeability in the future should you wish to upgrade individual parts but it works so well as it is it's not something that i'm really willing to mark it down too heavily on to be honest uh it is a well-balanced system and i think it's going to continue to be so as i've said for a good few years so yeah i think i've covered most of my main talking points i think one of the great things about it too is this, the size and weight savings mean that if you live somewhere like me and it can get quite windy during those uh, those nights that we do get to image on um its wind profile is about as small as you're ever gonna get for an astro camera setup so um yeah it, it has got a great advantage to it right there but yeah other than your alternative of buying everything separately and putting it all together which is totally valid if that's something you want to do if you are interested in an all-in-one um because it's, you know, it's an upgrade to you or it's something you want to use on the side like I'm doing right now. It's actually practically my main rig as it happens at the at this point in time. I'm just carrying it out every chance I get and sometimes leaving the, the obviously roof rolled, rolled on, to be honest. Um, then I think it's a great option. Um, I would I would try and put it like this, let's say. If, if my own dad came to me or something and said, I want to get into astrophotography, what do you recommend? I'd probably recommend him one of these, to be honest, along with a nice little Apo and an AM5 or something like that, because I think it's just an incredible starting point and not just a starting point, but something that can grow with you because you can move it from scope to scope to scope and just keep on enjoying it. You know what I mean? Uh, and that's where I'm at with it. So overall, for me, I think it's a great product. I really do. I can absolutely appreciate that it's not going to be for everyone. And that's fine. Nothing ever is. Um, but that's my thoughts on it. Again, I'm not paid to say any of this. This is just what I think about it. Um, so those are my thoughts, my genuine thoughts. If you enjoyed this, please do leave a like on the video for me. It would help out a ton. And a huge thank you, by the way, to everybody for your support out there in all the ways that you give it be it right from just watching the videos, which is a massive help uh, to people giving direct support through Patreon, YouTube memberships, and otherwise. I appreciate you all so much, uh, and I just want you to know that you are making my life so much better. So thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Anyway, with that said, guys, I won't keep you any longer. Look forward to seeing you in a future video. Until then, look after yourselves and close, guys.